Welcome back, everybody, to Fresh Outlook. Parkinson's disease is in the spotlight. It is a progressive disease, and while treatments for it are becoming more and more advanced every day, it is still a disease that so far cannot be cured. It starts out silently, often with a minor tremor or difficulty moving as quickly as you once did. Over time, however, the disease will affect everything from your ability to talk to your ability to walk and to even express your emotions on your face. Take a look. Parkinson disease is a progressive disorder of the nervous system, which affects several regions of the brain, especially those which control balance and movement. Parkinson disease can also affect emotions and cognition. Parkinson disease affects more than one million people in North America and more than four million globally. Although medications can offer some control over the symptoms, there is currently no cure for the disease. Because the disease impairs basic tasks such as walking, talking, and eating, the disease can cause additional anxiety and depression, on top of that already caused by the attack on the brain. Parkinson existed mostly in the shadows until it struck high-profile actor Michael J. Fox. As soon as I wake up, I can't go back to sleep. I mean, it starts going. So, so I, I would say that's the toughest part in the morning is, is to kind of go, well, I'm up whether I like it or not. I'm up now. April is Parkinson's Awareness Month. With increased awareness, more light takes the disease out of the shadows and hopefully fuels new efforts into treatments and a cure. I am joined now by the Fresh Outlook Think Tank, Dr. Human Azmi, Director of the Division of Movement Disorders at Hackensack University Medical Center, Dr. Janie Feldman, a psychologist, Dr. Jackie Guzda, a media analyst at Western Connecticut University. Doctor, I will begin with you, sir. Sure. Will all of us, in some shape or form, develop Parkinson's eventually? It seems like old people always tremble. Uh, very good question. I think uh, I think it goes to the awareness of the condition, and uh, and uh, no, we won't. The prev the incidence in, uh, of Parkinson's is about two percent. Um, there is multiple uh, different uh, symptoms of Parkinson's. Tremor is one of them, uh, but you can have tremor without having Parkinson's disease. Does it run in families? It can, it can. Uh, it can run in families or families where there's genes that are associated with Parkinson's. Certainly the prevalence in those families is much higher than the general population, but it can also be sporadic, uh, like how we develop um, blood pressure or, or, or um, uh, diabetes um, that can just, just happen. Does somebody like Muhammad Ali get it from traumatic shock to his head? Well, there is evidence uh, that, that mul multiple trauma can cause Parkinson's-like features. Um, uh, I don't know the details of, of his, uh, his journey, but uh, it's possible. Is it associated with other lifestyles, such as smoking, uh, recreational drug use, alcohol? Uh, no, you know the 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 development of Parkinson's or or the the development of Parkinson's in a patient uh, is um, it, it can happen based on genetic predisposition and an environmental factor. Uh, so we haven't really found something in particular that triggers it. Although there are studies that have shown, uh, for example, pesticides may may contribute to it or dry cleaning agents. Uh, but what w um, as far as smoking goes or or alcohol, uh, uh, that's not the case. Is there an age when it more typically strikes? Uh, the mostly in the 60s, in the 50s to 60s, uh, but there are younger patients that develop it, people under the age of 50 as well. About 10% of patients with Parkinson's develop it as a, in the young age uh, category. And the earlier the onset, is it more progressive? Is it more debilitating? It, it can be, yes. Because their metabolism is faster, the disease spreads more quickly? And also they have the disease for a longer period of time. What's the forefront of medicine right now when it comes to Parkinson's disease? So the, there's the, the classic uh, treatments of Parkinson's, which are, uh, which are medications, very, very good medications, actually, that can help patients with Parkinson's live very good quality of lives. Uh, there's also very uh, interesting studies that are coming out looking at, at uh, uh, various anti-inflammatory agents. Uh, um, there's a vaccine study that's looking at, at uh, uh, the potentially uh, helping treat Parkinson's disease. Uh, those are more in the future. Uh, and currently, for when, when um, medici medicines don't work, we consider surgery for patients uh, with uh, Parkinson's disease. What type of surgery? Is it uh, radio, uh, like a radio knife? Or, uh 
So the surgery is called deep brain stimulation. It's uh, where we place a pacemaker. If you've known anyone with a heart pacemaker, we pl place a pacemaker in the brain. And uh, the pacemaker is attached to a, a battery that controls the signals. Uh, and we set that the signals, and uh, the signals that go to the brain help the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. So it's as needed. So you're going to have an attack this machine senses a seizure coming on, it gives a stimulation to your brain and prevents a seizure. Well, actually, it's a continuous therapy. Um, so we set a certain uh, um, uh, degree of uh, frequency, wavelength, and, and amplitude, and it continuously delivers it to the, to the brain without the patient feeling uh, any um, uh, side effects from it, but feeling improvement in their symptoms. So it's a continuous um, delivery of signal. I'm going to turn to Jackie. Jackie, how important is it to have role models like Muhammad Ali or Michael uh, J. Fox as the face of this disease to get the word out there? Yeah, look, Michael J. Fox is a hero in my book. He put himself out there. Most people would run and hide their disability, but not him. He actually had a sitcom, and he made fun of himself with his disability, with his family in it. Uh, the more somebody with that kind of power, that celebrity power, comes out, the more people are aware of these illnesses and what they can do about it. Janie Feldman, you're a clinical psychologist. I could imagine the impact that it has on one's psyche when you have a diagnosis like this. In addition to Parkinson's, now I bet you're suffering from anxiety and depression mm -hmm. and worrying that it's going to get worse and it's also going to extend to the entire family unit as well. Absolutely. What happens for um, the patients who have uh, Parkinson's is they, they know what's coming and it's debilitating and frightening. Uh, it compromises their own identity uh, from movement but down to personality and everyday functioning. For the caregiver, you've got watching the illness and you've also got managing. And in terms of watching what happens is you see uh, the qualities that you cherish, uh, personality, sense of humor, wit, all of those things are trapped inside a body that's failing the, uh, the Parkinson's patient. And so witnessing that um, is just agonizing. And, it, and it's, it's just a cruel, cruel decline and slow and um, debilitating. But it's something that it puts um, the caregiver, if it's a child of the aging parent, in that sandwich position of dealing with the um, ailing parent and sometimes dealing with their own children, uh, not to mention their own issues. Dr. Asmi, does having Parkinson's lead to other disorders because you're moving less now, you're subject to seizure, you might have uh, traumatic injury and so forth? Tell me about that uh, aspect. Sure. Of it. So, just, so uh, patients with Parkinson's are not any more subject to seizure than, than other patients. That's an important point. But uh, your, your point is valid. As people lose their mobility, uh, they can be more prone to developing pneumonia, for example. In fact, people with Parkinson's are probably twice as more likely to end up in a hospital. Um, for, uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, so uh, Parkinson's is debilitating, can be debilitating, but the important thing to, to note is it, not every patient progresses the same way. And we need to learn um, that, that uh, we can live better with Parkinson's, you know, and th that's part of the um, uh, uh, Parkinson's awareness um, month is knowing that there are options out there, there is organizations out there, there's therapy out there that can help us live better with Parkinson's disease. Is it a spectrum of disorders? So uh, there is an umbrella of disorders called Parkinsonisms. Um, under that, there is the specific of Parkinson's disease, which is um, the medication response of Parkinson's. There are other uh, dis disorders that mimic Parkinson's disease, but may not respond the same way to, to medication, but it, they still fall under that umbrella of, of diagnoses. How does someone self-diagnose this at first? What are the symptoms that a person might experience? Uh, so it, it could, uh, Parkinson's is different in every patient and uh, one of the important things that we can get across in this show is it's very important to go to an expert, uh, a, a movement disorder specialist uh, that can appropriately uh, examine the patient, appropriately diagnose the patient because it often other things could mimic it and the diagnosis may, may not um, uh, come to fruition or, uh, until the second or third visit. Uh, so it's really important to seek out a, a professionally trained a movement disorder neurologist uh, that, that is really well versed in, uh, in diagnosing Parkinson's disease and appropriately treating it. 
And medicine is so specialized today that if you have something wrong with your eye, you go to a retina specialist, not just an ophthalmologist. If you have a movement disorder, you need to go to a, a neurologist that deals with movement disorders. That's exactly right. A very good point. You know, we, we are becoming so specialized in medicine each field of medicine, as more, more therapies come, come about, as more medications come about, our knowledge becomes more and more and more uh, focused on, on the thing we're really expert in. Uh, so even a general neurologist may not know enough about Parkinson's to be able to care properly for someone with Parkinson's disease. So it's important to at least once or twice a year visit a movement disorder neurologist, make sure everything is in order, make sure the medications are, are properly uh, given and there's no contraindicated medications to to ensure a, a good quality of life are these medicines basically sedatives no there, there's different classes of medicines so we develop Parkinson's because uh, our brain doesn't make uh, a neurotransmitter called dopamine uh, so the medications are designed to either replenish that in the body uh, prevent the breakdown of it or or be mimicking uh, medications that mimic the effect of dopamine uh, so that's that's the general classes of medications